After the fall of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the USSR, Soviet statues and monuments were toppled across Eastern Europe. This trend has recently caught new wind with Russia's military operation in Ukraine, which was swiftly followed by the removal of 69 Soviet statues across Eastern Europe. But Germany, despite being one of Ukraine's closest allies, has a different approach to remembering the role of Russia and the Soviet Union throughout its history. In June 2022, four months after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a Soviet memorial in the small town of Lutsen was undergoing regular maintenance. With a fresh coat of paint on the text of the 10-foot-tall pyramid, it could clearly read, Glory to the great Russian people, the nation of victors. And on the other side, a quote by Joseph Stalin, commemorating 12 Soviet prisoners of war who died at German hands in the area during World War II. $17,000 was set aside for the restoration of this and similar statues around the small community, just days after the German Chancellor committed to delivering new air defense systems to Ukraine. In the city of Dresden, officials have set aside funds to renovate the first monument erected by Soviet forces in Germany, which features Soviet soldiers and tanks mowing down Nazi infantry. Nearby, city workers are expanding a protected military cemetery containing the remains of Soviet servicemen stationed in the area during the Cold War. There are more than 4,000 Soviet statues and memorials scattered across all of Germany, many of which were commissioned by the Red Army or local allies immediately following the war. Most of these statues stand in the former German Democratic Republic, but even the West is home to many of these memorials, commemorating the sacrifice of Soviets in the face of Nazism. At Tiergarten in Berlin, two Soviet tanks sit on pedestals in front of a grand platform where a Soviet soldier stands, looking down, with a slightly raised hand directed towards the ground in front of him. These statues, along with many others like them in Germany, commemorate the roughly 80,000 Soviet soldiers who died during the Battle of Berlin. Inscribed in Russian underneath the soldier reads, Eternal glory to the heroes who fell in battle with the German fascist invaders for the freedom and independence of the Soviet Union. A few miles away, a 40-foot statue of a Russian soldier holding a German child in one hand and a giant sword in the other stands on top of a smashed swastika, gazing over Treptower Park. The entrance to the memorial consists of a large portal of stylized Soviet flags built out of red granite, flanked by two statues of kneeling soldiers. Most of the Red Army monuments in Germany are believed to have been built on the graves of Soviet soldiers or prisoners of war. One of these grave sites is in Pankow, Berlin, home to the largest Russian cemetery in Europe, covering a landscape of 30,000 square meters. At the entrance to the cemetery stand two massive portals. On the left portal, the text reads, Uncover your head. Here are Soviet soldiers, heroes from the Great War 1941 to 1945, laid to eternal rest. And on the other side, the right portal reads, a grateful humanity never forgets their brave deeds. Inside one of the portals, there is a large quote from Stalin. The strength of the Red Army was that it had none, and could not have any, racial hatred, neither towards other peoples nor the German people, and that they were raised in the belief of equality of all the peoples and races, and in the spirit of respect towards others' rights. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Germany has found itself in an awkward position among its NATO allies. The German Chancellor, Olaf Scholz, declared that the Russian invasion of Ukraine was the greatest threat to European order only miles away from the glorified Soviet tanks at the Tiergarten Park Memorial. These large Soviet monuments have raised many eyebrows by German allies, 
and have recently come under scrutiny by Western press. Shortly after the Russian invasion, protesters covered the Soviet tanks at Tiergarten with Ukrainian flags. The flags were quickly removed, and authorities urged the public to refrain from turning these memorials into stages of political conflict. Even as dozens of Soviet memorials are toppled all across Eastern Europe in wake of Russia's invasion, Germany, one of Ukraine's strongest military supporters, remains committed to preserving its Soviet memorials, whether large or small. Far from removing Red Army monuments, local officials across eastern Germany have been renovating and expanding some of them, even as the national government has spent billions of euros to defeat Russia in Ukraine. There are scant efforts by grassroots organizations or German politicians to have these monuments removed. German politicians claim that their hands are tied due to a German-Soviet agreement signed back in 1990 to maintain and care for the graves and memorials of each other's countries. Some German historians have pointed out that the Good Neighbor Agreement is based on mutual respect for territorial integrity and argue that Russia's invasion of Ukraine nullifies the pact. Others complain that there is too much bureaucracy, not enough political will, and that their calls for reform fall on deaf ears. But the deeper reality is that Germany's scant effort to remove these Soviet memorials is rooted in a strong connection that much of the country has with its past. The Good Neighbor Agreement to preserve memorials and grave sites was signed shortly after the fall of communism in East Germany and a sharp rise in vandalism of Soviet memorials. With the fall of communism, fascism was emboldened and began to show its face to the German public once more. In 1989, far-right vandals desecrated the Trepp Tower memorial site, and in response, the Spartacus League called for a public demonstration in open opposition to the growing fascist threat. The demonstration gathered a quarter of a million GDR citizens and affirmed the anti-fascist identity of the formerly East German public. Theresa Schneidwind, the head of Lutzen's museum, explained that we were taught to learn from pain. We care for our memorials because they allow us to learn from the mistakes of past generations. In Lutzen, local residents say they want to keep their Red Army memorial as it is, as a tribute to the central place the pyramid occupied in public life during communist rule. Some remember playing around it while attending nearby kindergarten, and they say they will fight plans to move it for a proposed new supermarket. In anticipation of anti-Russian criticism, the mayor of Lutzen firmly declared the reason for maintaining the local memorials. This is our history. No matter what is going on in world politics, we have to take care of it because it is part of us. This story is loosely based on the New York Times article by Anatoly Kermenev. The article has a paywall, but can be found at the link in the description below.